Welcome back today. Uh, she is a sensory perception and emotional management strategist, and she has a brand new book out, Yucky, Yummy, Savory, Sweet, Understanding the Flavors of Emotions. We are tying our culinary loves and our emotional feelings together. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Kim Corte. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Hi. It's true, that relationship. I'm a, I'm a foodie also, so... Uh, thus why the connection to food for emotion management. Uh, so the book itself, tell, tell me about the, the book itself. It's, it's yucky, it's yummy, it's savory, it's sweet, right. and it, it helps us emotionally. Well, I'm using the concept, so I'm trying to help people view their feelings and understand their feelings through the eyes of a chef, understanding flavors in a recipe. So... It, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, we have sensory perception that we use all the time for flavor, right? What we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, all of these, these multiple sensory systems go into flavor. And we have another sensory system that people don't relate to uh, food, but it's actually used, it's called interoception. And interoception is how we feel inside of our bodies. So I'm taking this whole concept of food and connecting to our feelings, um, just like a, connect, a chef connects to uh, flavor, and using that to marry uh, to make emotion management a little bit more relatable uh, and consumable, pun intended. <laughs> So uh, there are actual recipes in the book. No, you we we talk about, but they're how, emotional recipes, right? So we all have a, basically a library of recipes in our head, and from the time we're born, we are developing these recipes. They're either handed to us culturally, or um like from family, what we learn in school. So when we talk about recipes, it's basically what people call wiring, but it's experiences, it's memories, it's uh, beliefs, it's all of these things. They're all the same thing. It's a combination of sensory systems or sensory input that our brain uses not only for us to recall what we've learned, our memories, but also to produce our feelings to produce Reactions. how we respond. Yes. So that a whole idea of having these recipes and and being able to taste them, meaning the the more connected we are to our internal sensory system, this this interoceptive sense of how we feel inside, it's like cultivating our emotional palate. And the more connected we are to this sensory system, the greater we can get at identifying and potentially changing our recipes or recognizing what's been cooked and saying, no, I don't want to consume this emotionally now. And that's the idea behind it because not everything tastes great. But sometimes it's not supposed to taste great. It's not, you know, going to be a, a great recipe. Medicine's not great all the time. Yeah. No, it <laughs> isn't. And and sometimes it's like a so basically cheese. we have to sometimes we have to do some hard things in our lives that we don't actually like to get us to a point where we're trying to get to, like the struggles, the nothing's handed to us. So in interception, <clears throat> basically introspectiveness, looking at ourselves, how we act, how we respond what our programming from childhood has been and then realizing that this is so and then trying to break it back down and apart within ourselves and recognizing our triggers and our and our wants and our desires and our needs for happiness does that make sense yes and and so i'm just going to take it and uh kind of ref refine that maybe a little bit more maybe just add a different bit of a a slant to that so our brain and, and how we experience the world is a prediction. It's a constant, uh, we, we think we're in the now, but 95 plus percent of the time, we're using these recipes to predict right now. And it's only when we're consciously aware that we are able to be more accurate at the what's going on around us. So 
I'll, I'll give you the example that I give in the book. It, it's about a guy who went into a party and he took a sip of wine and said, oh, I love Opus One. This is the best wine ever because he saw this bottle and he said, Opus One, I love it. He took a second taste because everybody was laughing and realized this is an Opus One. It's because his friend, the host of the party, had poured in some two buck chuck. So if you know what Opus One is, it's a fancy schmancy wine brand. And if you know what two buck mm -hmm. chuck is, is, it's let's say it's a lot less fancy Trader Joe's. and yeah. <clears throat> yeah and and there's not the kind of care and love and culturing you know what it takes to make a, a a stellar wine like an opus one like with the two buck chuck so the point is is that we can get our predictions wrong with what we taste Thus why chefs often take a second taste to make sure that they're getting the flavors right so when we taste something emotionally, like we have a response. What I'm trying to do is to get people to be more conscious in that, that very moment, to look at the ingredients going on around them and say, is, is, does this taste like whatever my emotional response was? Because you might just be tasting a two buck chuck and not even know it. But when you take that second taste emotionally, you're going to get a more accurate representation of really what's going on. And that might help you to pivot. But it's that, like I said before, that cultivation of your emotional palate that gives you that capability because now you, you're you able to distinguish the difference between anger and ire, you know, just being irritated or being enraged. There's a flavor palette there, right? Like not all peppers have the same level of spiciness and not all desserts have the same level of sweetness. And so that's, that's the idea behind this book. And because so many of us can, can find some comfort in food or at least relatability, then if we can do that and transfer it to emotions, then that gets you used to connecting to those feelings inside of your body. And taking a second before you react <clears throat> to recognize that this has this reaction is happening. I now have a choice. Do I get frustrated? Do I get angry? Or do I just not care or, at all? <laughs> or does this does I'm, this deserve I'm anger? Thinking, or does it deserve irritation? Or really are you just getting the whole situation wrong? I you know, that mm. happens too. We could we could say oh, wait, that's not what they're saying. Oh, wait, that's not what they're doing. And we got it wrong altogether. I, I personally don't really uh, try to let anything affect me in any way, shape, or form, because if it's outside of me, it's outside of me. And all I have is me to deal with in that moment, right? So if I just don't care, then nothing can really affect me. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you're, no, having a, you're, you're having a terrible day. Oh, you're yelling at me in traffic. I don't care. Like, you yell away, man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's <laughs> not the... I am so sorry my dogs are barking. Uh, oh, you're fine. Life happens, right? Um, mm -hmm. They're the cutest. But, now, how are you going to um, react to that? <laughs> oh, I'll just say, Finnegan, enough. And look, <laughs> there you go. Um, so, <laughs> yes, that is true. But I... And I'm great for you, but I think you can see that there's a lot of people who are very myopic and who are highly reactive and who oh, are yeah. not allowing for someone's different palate. Like if have you if you've ever been to a wine tasting, you'll have all these people say, Oh, well, in this wine, I get more stone fruit or wet rock, or you hear all of these varieties. Or someone might it might taste more sweet to them and you're like, I don't think this is sweet at all. It depends on their palate. So allowing for or their perception. So may, <clears throat> yes, perceptions. Maybe, maybe if we and, and, if we tie the metaphors together with what we mean, right? Then yeah, I think maybe the audience yeah. can understand it a little better, right? Yes. So, so when you say when you say palate, you mean perception, yes, or something yes. to that to that effect. <clears throat> yes. Thank you for that. Because it can get sli sli slightly confusing to just I ride the metaphor completely. Yeah, no, I, I I hear you, and thank you for that. Um, but yes, uh, it, it's perception, right? And so we don't have any tolerance for today for people tasting other than how we experience these perceptions. That people can take a situation and experience something 
different and we we Outside don't have a tolerance for it. Exactly. Yeah. So we can't examine well, we're all it moving from, so fast. Most people are going so fast through the daily lives and they're not yep. waking up every morning with conscious awareness of me, my day, things, you know, and being aware of other people aren't perceiving your situation or any situation the same. Our genetics, the way I eat an apple and the way that you eat an apple are digested completely differently. We are not the yes. same in any way, shape, or yes. form. Yes. And I mean, so, even, our, even our mood at, at the time that we are experiencing an emotion pay, plays a huge factor. They, uh, how we take care of our bodies, um, all of these things play a huge, huge factor in experiencing emotions. And so that, that recognition that, you know, your kitchen isn't working very well right now, you might have a malfunction going on. So that's, it's interfering with the production of our emotion recipe. These, these are, these are the, the conscious awareness that I'm trying to help people develop. Because we, we, we need to understand how we react, but then we also need to be understanding that we don't understand what is happening around us per se. Yes. So one person's they, mood. They're in a mood. I need to know that they're in a mood. I can see that, oh, they're not quite right today, you know, and so they're going to respond differently. So if we are first aware of our surroundings and empathetic towards the people around us, we will be more understanding of how they are reacting to us. Yes. And, and, and this always sounds very matrixy, but our world, like we don't see with our eyes, we take in sensory s signals that the brain uses. So we, we experience light, uh, we have sound waves that come in. So we have all of these different vehicles for receiving these perceptive signals, these perceptive inputs. And it's our brain that's doing the tasting. It's our brain that's doing the seeing. It's our brain that's hearing and telling us what it's hearing. And once again, it's using our past experiences to do that. And so we live really in a world that's inside of our head. And it's a great philosophical debate, like <laughs> what color is that color red? Because you could be seeing red and I could be seeing red and I don't know that you're seeing the same thing. And I think that makes for a huge kind of like forgiveness of other people like I don't know what's going on with them but even for ourselves like we we're limited by our experiences but we're also limited by a predictive brain so the the more we can give our brain to use those predictions like give it the variety the the distinction that we need then we're being more proactive for our future emotional experiences and that's why there's so many self-help books out there <laughs> <laughs> well, this is yeah, true. Because we, but... we, we have all the inner knowledge, but we don't necessarily have access to all of our inner knowledge because some people just aren't told that they even have the inner knowledge to access to begin with, right? So you first must right. be aware that you have this knowledge. Ask the questions if you wish to receive the answers, because if you don't have the questions, you're not going to get the answers. So yes. first you have to know that you need to ask questions in order to receive answers, in order to gain knowledge, in order to figure out what questions to ask next, yes. in order to gain more and, knowledge. <clears throat> and, and I'm gonna tie back to um, the the better we are at connecting to that, that feeling inside, the better we are at identifying and pivoting and, and responding to situations. And it's not like these recipes in our head are used just for emotions, they're used for our decisions, our thoughts, our behaviors. And so if we're not happy with, uh, you know, if we're, we're having bad luck with our decisions or we're having difficulty connecting to people or different situations like that, it's probably because we don't have that strong connection to ourselves. And it starts with interoception because that's that's where the communication takes place with the brain to us. And then you tweak the recipe. And then you tweak the recipe, just like a good chef would, right? Too much salt, not enough this. I think I need some oregano. That's, so how that's do we, the idea. How, how, do, how do we tweak the recipe once, once we are aware that this recipe no longer serves us? 
Well, you, it's, how, how do it, we how do we how do we design a new recipe? Well, you you know that recipe, the old recipe exists, right? So when it presents, you say no, like you you restructure it. So when you train your brain when you have that response in a situation that you don't want. And like I said, when you're connected to that, to that feeling, then when it comes up, you're able to go, oh, wait, okay, this is what's going on. And then pivot from it. That's what happens for me. So I can't speak for everybody in the world. I speak for me. And I know that that it's become like just a habit now where I'll get a feeling and I'll go, wait, is that what's what is that what's going on here? I mean, it's this is not overly complicated. It, the the hardest part for most people is just being able to connect to how they feel inside. But once you get that, then you're able to identify and say, no, this is not it. And or it just fades away, honestly. Like the recipe eventually fades away, but when it rears its little head, you recognize it and and stop. Shut it down. <laughs> well, and 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 like I said, you know, it's it's that that distinction in situations. I use the idea of vanilla ice cream. You can have three different vanilla ice creams from different producers. They're all vanilla ice cream, but there's a difference in how th those flavors present. One might use higher quality ingredients. One, one might not. Uh, one might be a little bit more icy or a little bit more sweet, or it has a Tahitian vanilla or, you know, a, a, a different kind of vanilla. And so you you learn what you like and you don't like that way. And that's where we get to know ourselves. So connecting to feelings is understanding what we like, what we don't like, what we want, what we don't want, and you know, using that to frame who we are and to create really emotionally the world that we want to live in, just like you've done, right? You 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 don't care if people make you mad, and that's a good thing. You've you've trained your brain that way. As long as I don't make them mad, right? Like that's <laughs> like you don't like you, you want to affect people in only positive ways, right? So you go about yes. your day affecting people only in positive ways. You don't want to upset somebody else. Now, if they are upset or you are living and doing your true self, and you know, you're not trying to piss them up, they're just going to get pissed no matter what you did, right? Like you can't let that affect you either. But no, it's not for the most part, nothing you can do. They, they're taking, yeah. you ever have someone where you're having a conversation and you say something to them and then they respond like completely off kilter and you're like, wait, where did that come from? I don't understand mm -hmm. why you just said mm -hmm. I said that. And, and that's because they took your words and they only filtered or they predicted something that you were saying. And this is why I say it's like, you can try and be as clear as you can with communication, with your actions. You can try and give them all of the ingredients that you want them to put into their recipe, but what they do with it is beyond you. So you're right. You can, you can be as kind, you can be as clear, you can be as thoughtful as possible. But you you can't you can't control what someone else is doing with their ingredients because sometimes they just kind of make them up. <laughs> Throw out a stone soup. <laughs> uh, just side note: uh, you ever seen the study about the inner dialogue of humans that like the majority of us don't actually have the inner dialogue where they talk to themselves about themselves. Or narr um, the, 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 the narrator? No, I don't. So I haven't. No. I'll have to look it up. Uh, yeah, I'll have to, I'd have to go Google it right now. But it just it just came to my mind about... Because, you know, people who are more self-aware are communicating with themselves all the time, right? They are talking yes. to themselves. They are recognizing their emotions. They are saying, oh, I could make this choice or I could make that choice. Or, oh, I piss her off every time I do that. Maybe I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Again, like, yes. oh, let her talk. I'm terrible about listening to my wife. <laughs> she has to, she has to get my attention like 50 times just to get me to listen to her. And I try to be, and I'm, a, I know I do that, and I try to be better at it. But it's, it's a recipe that is just like, I just don't hear her the first three times. It's just like, Rashawn, Rashawn, Rashawn. Well, and, maybe but you're, but I know that concentrating. Well, I usually am doing something else, and she's interrupting me, but. <laughs> 
So maybe that's just an improvement in the communication style, waiting for you to not be in there or get your attention before she speaks. There's other ways to do that. But um, I, I do know that because of the studies of predictive brains that for people with high anxiety or, um, it, you know, when you are constantly like predicting that things are going to go badly. So we, we don't use our brain just really? to predict the next few seconds, but we also use our brain to predict the future. And they've shown that people who are like always anxious if they write down their anxieties, like 97% or 93% of their anxieties never come through. And so it's a lesson to us to not always believe everything we think or feel or say. Um, and, and also be and mindful. Understand. Yeah. Because that, your thoughts do create your reality. And if you, you know, exactly. it's just like going about your day, right? You, yeah. you wake up in the morning, maybe you're doing, you're thinking about what you're going to do next, right? You're what, what am I going to be doing later today? What plans do I have? Right. And that just in that process of imagining your day, you are planning your day and those events will happen or you might change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but well, for the most you could part, also, am I going to go home sorry. and take a nap? Am I going to go home and do work? Right. Like, oh, I should go home and do work, but oh, I also want to take a nap. You have the choice to be productive or take a nap. Maybe you need a nap. You know, but whatever you feel is best, you're going to eventually make that decision in the moment, right? And you thought about it, you planned it out, you, and then eventually you take the nap or you do work. And life is like that on a larger scale too. If you are imagining yourself somewhere in ten years, you are more likely to get to that place than you are if you just never imagine it at all, right? So the more you walk yes. yourself through the doing work part instead of the nap part, you're going to get more excited about doing the work part. And maybe you don't even need the nap anymore because you've thought through all these things that you're going to accomplish by getting some shit done. And you're going to feel better about that at the end of the day. Now you've imagined that, oh, I'm so accomplished at the end of the day. Well, now I don't want to take the nap anymore. I want that accomplishment at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's so, and, and as we, yes, because as you, as you produce the thoughts and you associate the feeling of that thought being completed, um, that that's producing, reproducing the feeling. So the, the feelings are guides for us. They're, they're honest guides for us and the brain. But on the other hand, you could also have had a weird interaction with someone. Let's just say the first time you talk to someone. Um, and then now you, you have to meet with them again and you're anticipating another weird conversation. Guess what? Likely that conversation is going to be weird because you're, you're expecting weirdness. You're planning so, for it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the the what we expect is typically what we experience. And so it's about really honestly is managing your expectations because that's just what the brain you, does. You get, it's there to serve us. Careful what it, you ask really for, you is. just might get it. <laughs> yes. And and I know that sounds super metaphysical, but it's just the way that it works. It's because why? Because we have the world inside of our head. Our model of the world sits in our brain. And you are just a prediction of my brain. And we're, we're like 0.3 seconds behind everything too, right? Like, yes. <laughs> we're, I think we're, there, everything it, it, it has already happened. We're a second behind. Yes, yes, yes. Which is I, crazy. I, in my, in my book, I give the example. Um, I, the wall, there's a shared wall between our main bedroom and the TV room. And I was sick. And so we were watching the same show or the same movie at, and he was on the TV and I was in on my iPad and because a, a time delay, cause it's a, one of those recording boxes. So it's always a little bit behind and he didn't notice that it was behind, but I did because I was listening to it now and he was on delay. So that's how life is. It doesn't feel like it's on delay because that's our experience, but we are on delay. So just a teeny tiny slight slight delay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but that delay makes all the difference. It gives us the ability to be ready to respond. Like what if we, you know, didn't run, get ready to run from the lion, you know, have all those chemicals be released that makes us able to run the cortisol, um, and adrenaline, 
if if we waited till we saw the line, the the brain has already seen it and has got us ready to run. So it it works in our favor too. So we have to be grateful for those moments also. <laughs> well, thank you for those moments. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether the, uh, whether the lion's can... real or not. Right. And, yeah. you know, and maybe, maybe the lion just wanted to say hi. <laughs> What's up? You know, I was just like, hello. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? My kids are doing? over there. Stay away. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking, so even fun. all the even the lions in Africa are pretty they pretty used to just people nowadays. They just hey, what's up? <laughs> just driving by <laughs> I don't again. Know. I haven't been to Africa, but I'm sure if it was a hungry lion, it would still look at you like lunch. Yeah, I, well, they they just they're, they're always on tour, right? Like you're, there's always trucks of tourists driving through to like look at them and wave at them and see the gazelles. Like every day, it's huge. It's tourism, right? So the lions are now just they're in a huge zoo, just like oh, like, oh people come through again. <laughs> they need to start. I mean, you probably don't want to go up and start poking one with a stick. <laughs> no. What? Or get too but close. I think for the most part, this is just off, completely off subject, but um. We as human beings surround with the animals for the most part. I don't think we ever thought saw each other as preys. I think even though if a gorilla and a human bump into each other in the middle of the woods, there's a respect that says, "Hey, we are not here to hurt each other." If I'm in your territory, you're gonna you're gonna tell me, and I'm gonna be like, "All right, good, I'm out." <laughs> but for the most part, it's we're not looked at as food. Even sharks don't look at us as food. If they taste us, they're like, "Oh God, what?" The hell? <laughs> that, that ain't right. <laughs> That's spoiled. <laughs> I don't. I don't know enough about that. Um, I have a joke that about the sharks and and eating us, but I, I won't. I won't bore you with it. It was my my ninety one year old father's silly joke. But um, the whether or not like there's still like when you look at little kids and dogs like you know pitbulls are supposed to be the worst things ever and you see pities and you see all these animals they taking care of each other cat i just saw something about a cat raising little pigs that were orphaned you know it was feeding them it's you know we're all set up to get along and that connection i mean the strongest connection we could possibly have is love and when we can connect to that feeling that is what produces all kinds of joy but when you can't connect or the your recipes for love are kind of fluffed up you know what i mean like they're not they're not very healthy you know mm -hmm. being able to see that and recognize it and then create the recipes that you want so that you can feel that that's that's where the power comes and that's where i'm trying to get people to get to so that you can feel love there's it's really easy i think like i i have a feeling you're very connected to your feelings but <laughs> there are people out there who can will just say i don't know how to feel this i don't know how i feel and that's that's pretty sad. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. or fortunately, you know, the feelings that we have are, are telling us if we're sick. It's not just about love or hate or anger. It's also about keeping us healthy physically, like eat, sleep, it, all of these feelings too. So mm -hmm. we, people who are not connected tend to be less healthy because they don't they don't feel those feelings that are telling them the warning signals that say, hey, I'm unhealthy. So this little Society system has, inside of us has is good for all kinds of things. <laughs> hmm? As, uh, the, the, well, at least the, the, the American society and diet has, um, yeah, if you're not fully self-aware about even food or diet in this country, then there's, it's almost impossible for you to be healthy. Because you're just going to go to the yeah. store and you're going to buy the stuff at the store. And yeah. none of the stuff at the store is good for you. So that's a sad. pretty broad <laughs> statement. I wouldn't say none, but I would say there's the majority. Even your fruits and, and vegetables are covered in are covered in pesticides. You gotta go home and wash them. You gotta, you know, and if you're not gonna take the time to clean them, then they're still covered in it. You're still ingesting glyphosate and you're you can't buying bread, finding a chip, a potato chip that's not seed oiled, 
imp- nearly impossible. Like no, nearly just... impossible for the average American. You can't go buy a loaf of bread that doesn't have corn syrup and seed oil in it. Like unless you go to your farmer's market, right? Or if you have one or you get online or you have a Publix, right? It's the only yeah. way you can get stuff that doesn't just have trash in it. Three ingredients well, for bread. I don't know why there's 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of them you can't pronounce. Uh, I, I I live in, in an area that, you know, pretty much any store you go to has an organic section. So maybe I'm I'm on the spoiled side here. But um, Smaller it's true. towns go one way or the other. So you either yeah. only have the family dollar in the Walmart or you have all the little local people who all help each other out in the tiny little community, right? So... True. But the, the point is, is that our stomach and, and this microbiome that we've got in there is so important because, you know, what, 90% of our serotonin is produced from the stomach. And we need that serotonin to feel, feel positive feelings. Feel serotonin is mm-hmm. a, is a, is a, is a an upper, so to speak. And so if we aren't taking care of ourselves physically, you know, and also too, our immune system, our emotions and our immune system are directly tied. You know, a change in our emotions has a, an immediate effect on our immune system. So the the whole connection inside of our body is so tight. The systems that we have, they're not we treat mental illness separate from physical and you know we're just a one human body that is working in unison and we're also connected to people like we we need people's as much as we need you know a healthy diet we need a healthy social life with healthy people you can have bad a bad diet you know socially and and if we can <laughs> develop all of these good different diets aspects, all around yeah, good diets all around. Let's let's just everyone consume well. Eat real food, be compassionate, and we'll all be fine. <laughs> and and seek compassionate people to be around. Like find like kind people to be around. Supportive. Yeah. Yep. It's so I it's, mean it's, yeah, we just have to have to be aware yeah. of everything around us. Yeah. You, and, you are and you sounds, are what you eat. You are the people you hang out with. And uh, you you are what you exude. Yes, and you are what you consume emotionally too. And and um, I was going to say something, but I I lost it, so I guess I won't say it. Oh, no. But the 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 yeah. Here, wait. Where did you go? Come back. Come back. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm so sorry. I, I, you know, when you get my age, things things just dash in in a second. It's like. What happened? Um, but the, the 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 point is, is that, that. we're all connected. You're just a baby. We're <laughs> we, are. we we're babies. Yeah, we're all babies. All babies. True. Um, the the point is, is that the connections are endless. The, the uh, inside of our body and outside, and uh, um, emotions really do drive a lot of that. And so that's why, for to me, it's so important because. I was shut down emotionally in in my past from things that happened to me, and I can tell you that be- developing that connection is just such a makes such a huge difference. And now I caught the point; it just came back. You know, being more conscious in your life. Yep, I reeled it in. Um, it's <laughs> it's like a fish. It's like this now. Um, <laughs> um it it being more aware doesn't take as much energy as you would think it's it's like a habit and it, it's just getting used to doing it just it just takes a second for me to go wait what's going on here and and your brain responds pretty quickly and then it just like i said it's a habit and it sounds like a lot more work than it really really is because i think that once a chef has that trained palate when they taste food to to recognize all the different flavors or to see what's what needs to change or if it's ready to be served that is where we get to um emotionally and it's it's 
been a huge change for me. So that's why I advocate this so much. And I try and help people as much as I can, because I want people to feel good. And some people just don't know how to do that. And it doesn't happen overnight either, right? Like just Mm -mm. because you start being aware, you can't get upset with yourself when you find yourself in an angry, frustrated moment or in a depressed moment and you're, you, you're aware of it and, and you're like, why can't I just stop it? Well, don't stop it. You need to like live that fully, right? Embrace whatever that emotion is completely, lift, yes. hold it, and then, then and it will dissipate it. on its own and love it, right? Love it. Say, mm-hmm. I, I understand this is happening right now. I get it. I, and I see kind of why it's happening and this is how I feel about it, but I'm just going to love this little part of myself real quick <laughs> until that goes away. And and it's mastery. You just got to keep working at it. You're never done practicing. No, <laughs> and you're never done. I mean, I, I've been doing this for years and I'm still a work in progress. And that's why I don't think you could ever be a master at this because there's just so many factors that play into it. But it's not about ma- being a master. It's about just, you know, noticing Trying. and taking every and opportunity. And so when you have compassion for yourself, you're going to have a lot more compassion for others too, because you're going to know like, well, they, they're going through what I'm going through. I mess up so they can mess up. And, and the cool thing with the brain it's all okay. is- <laughs> yes, it is all okay. And the cool thing with the brain is that if you take that moment and replay it in your head and then replay it differently, your brain doesn't know. Your brain's just sitting in a black box. That's why athletes will do things in their head. They will actually run whatever things that they're doing. They visualize it because your brain doesn't know the difference. And they've seen people, yes, shoot the ball, you know, bat the ball, whatever it is that you're doing. Just replay Visualize. it in your head how you want it to be, how you wished it would have been to help you get to that point the next time in the future. And feel, this is the most important thing, is that when you when you replay it in your head, have the feeling that you want to experience. Create that feeling in your body. And when you recreate it in your brain and you feel it in your body, you're getting that full experience. And moving closer towards the future of that really being it. And exactly. Exactly. You're giving your brain. Make your reality more. what you want. Just be aware it's a slow process. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen immediately. I mean, but no, it, it will doesn't. happen as long as you as long as you embody that that vibration of it happening. Exactly. That's exactly to- it. Yes. Two, two last what, very important important questions. Oh, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. go no. I was going to say because that's in the end what it, we all are. We're just vibrating cells, and we're we're all just a bunch of waves in this world, and we look like we're solid, but we're really just a bunch of waves vibrating at a density that seems real. Awesome. Song. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, cool. Where can we go get your book? Very important question first. Amazon. And if you want a link to it, you can go to my website, right which is K- yes, kimcordy.com. Okay. And if you sign up there, I offer like a free preview. So it's just a PDF of the introduction and first chapter. And the first chapter's name is Opus One, Two Buck Chuck, and the Wine Snob, where I go in more detail about what happened that that day at the party where the guy mistook the wine. And um, I also give some other examples of how we predict emotions, but also about how emotions, when we predict them, are really our future. We like to think our past, our present, and our future, but our memories are linear they're everything. They're our past, our present, and our future. Because I can think about them right now, or even think about not thinking about them and think about them in the future. Or not even think about them, but the brain just uses them. Or that. <laughs> or that. Subconscious. Yeah. All yeah. Right. It doesn't uh, so always take link conscious. for the book. Right. Uh, link for the book is right down there. Also, check out kimcorte.com. Last super, super duper important question. What are you having mm. for dinner tonight? Mm-hmm. 
you know what? We ate like this gigantic meal last night. We had ribeye steaks and I made uh, mashed potatoes and this beautiful, We our garden is just really in full bloom. The, our zucchini and yellow neck, quick neck squash is just amazing. So I made a nice medley with some, some, uh, uh, bell peppers, little, those little sweet bell peppers. So I think we're going to end up having some leftovers because I made so much food. That's funny. Cause yesterday I also grilled out a bunch of steak and barbecue chicken and I made squash mm. and asparagus. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Today we will also be having leftovers. I think I'm actually going to make steak and eggs uh, for dinner. Oh, that, that, that sounds good. I made my husband, because uh, we had this much day. steak left over. Um, <laughs> I, I made my husband, He well, we're, we don't have kids, but his dad came over. Do you have puppies? And, um, Do you have cats? We have doggies. You heard my babies. We have, we have two daddy. fur babies. <laughs> oh, man. They... Oh man, I'm just looking at them laying down here and they are cuter than cute. They're both mixes. And so when people ask me like, oh, what kind of dogs are these? They're 100% cute. Yes, but, um, they are. 100% yes, good the, dogs. That's what they are. Yes, good dog. Anyway, I was going to tell you about my <laughs> the breakfast I made, but I think oh. uh, you need to go, right? No, tell me about your breakfast. I was trying to get the dog to come over here to show you, but he walked away. Um, we just, I just took the, the leftover steaks, slightly warmed it in a pan, scrambled egg with some real sharp cheddar cheese and some French bread with it. It was, mm. he, my husband enjoyed it. I liked how I season it it's with a little garlic salt. It's so yum. Uh, I haven't eaten yet today. No, no, no yeah, I haven't either. I had a spoonful of peanut butter. <laughs> I had my hydrogen water. And uh, my super greens. That's so Ooh, all I've had oh. is the peanut <laughs> and butter. My sea and my Have you ever had an Olipop? Yeah, yeah, they're good. I, these, I like poppies too. Um, the, if you ever get these, their classic root beer is delicious. I had one at a restaurant, a uh, farm to table restaurant, the other day. Right. There's the root beer is I've had almost all the flavors and this root beer is it's is very delicious. sarsaparilla, right? It's got that, that real like that, that, yeah yeah it's got yeah, that yeah. Real, like, that real original sarsaparilla root beer. It flavor. does because it's made with chicory and all that uh, Jerusalem artichoke. I, it's it's really good and it's supposed to be a probiotic botanical mm -hmm. plant fiber. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I like those. I have poppies. Um, and there's another one that is they keep in the refrigerated section because it has to be cold because it actually has live bacteria in it. That's, that's the way Olipop is. Is that the Olipop? Maybe that's Olipop then. Olipop has yeah, to be kept cold. Yeah, yeah. it does. Okay, um, so another good one, one out now is another good one out is Culture Pop. I Culture just Pop. found it in our like local Safeway. And it's called Culture Pop. And that's really good. Also, too, supposed to be probiotic, all that natural stuff. But, um, yeah. you know, you still got to <laughs> be careful how much soda. sugar. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, five, how many grams is in that one? The uh, pop poppies have five grams. And then. This is 15. Oh, poppy. It's 30, but yeah, it is, it's 35 it's calories. But it also that's has so fiber. So you got to remember whenever you add fiber, to anything, Helps the that's why fruit, spike. well, no, it slows down the absorption rate of the glucose. So that's why a, a whole fruit is so much better for you to consume than like an apple versus apple juice Smoothie. because all the fibers uh -huh. taken away so that the fiber in the drink helps to slow down the, the rate of absorption of the sugar. And also, if you're going to have dessert, you should have a salad first because, or some vegetables, because just eating vegetables before you eat sugar keeps the absorption down. Fiber. It's the fiber in the fiber. veggies. Fiber. Fiber is it. in the veggies. I guess it would <laughs> so be weird, my... right, to take Miralax and then have a chocolate shake. Yeah, probably not smart. <laughs> or put Miralax so in I... your chocolate shake. <laughs> I, uh, I used That's what I'm to... I used to just wake up and I'd have I'd have like a kale smoothie with like carrots and apples and bananas and 
and I stopped doing that. And now first thing in the morning, I wake up and I have broccoli cheddar eggs, right? With maybe some ham, broccoli and cheddar, I'm just in the eggs, I ate the eggs first. And then I make basically just a, just a yogurt fruit bowl with blueberries and pumpkin seeds because pumpkin seeds, all you need to eat is like a quarter cup of pumpkin seeds a day and you get like all the magnesium you could ever possibly need. Really? Was, that's not even good to know. Yeah. It's not even that much. It's a quarter cup. And so you just use it instead of granola or even with some of your granola and have, you know, your little parfait and with your super healthy, retardedly expensive yogurt and or make it yourself. Just make your own yogurt. I I pay eight (laughs) bucks for Strauss. Do you do you remember in here in Cal? I I get sure they have it all over, but the Strauss family, um, they they have a Greek yogurt that of course I have plain. And it's crazy expensive, but it is so delicious. Do you make your own yeah. granola? Uh, no, I buy, I'm a big fan of Bob's Red Mill. Anything, mm. like anything, Bob's Red Mill. I'm yep, me too. Big, 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 big I, I make granola. Love, love Bob. I make my granola cereal <laughs> from that, from Bob's. Ah, from Bob's. Well, mm-hmm. maybe I should just do that. Throw the pumpkin seeds yeah. in there and you're good to go. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm going to make sure I put in it next time I make it. A quarter cup it, at I, least. But you said a quarter cup a day? quarter cup a day is about 400 milligrams of magnesium. Good to know. And women need 300 and men should get 400. And ideally, everyone should just have 500. But <laughs> Well, then why aren't we just having more? What, why why right. is it less for women and ideal for 500. I don't know. Oh, no. I think that's just like if you just like it doesn't matter. Like everyone should just eat 500 milligrams. You'll be more than fine. Right. Like you, you're not going to mm. overdose on it. Okay. But, so minimum you know, oh my for good, women is three. You, minimum 300. Yeah. Is okay. how much we should at least have. Okay. But you can have more. And it's just pumpkin seeds. Who knew? Like and right. super absorbable. Right. Like instead of taking your magnesium and your pill form or whatever it is, just eat your pumpkin seeds. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lady, a, a lady was having a problem with her magnesium absorption, and so I did a bunch of research on it, and it turns out pumpkin seeds are the best form um, of magnesium. So you know, it's it. We are we're we're so silly. Um, I we don't eat nearly close to how we should, as you were just talking about. And so we end up spending as much or more money on vitamins that we could be putting into just eating a healthy diet. Yeah. It's yeah. really not as difficult as we think it is. It's just, it's programming mm-hmm. yourself to prepare, you know, because you're not going to, you can't eat out, right? Like the, nothing is safe out there. You can't go to a restaurant and eat French fries made in canola oil if you're trying to actually feel good every day and be healthy. You just, you can't, you literally can't. So you have to be a forward thinker, you know, just like with your, with your emotions, you have to stop, take a second, think about my week. What are the things that I like that I enjoy that are good for me that I can work into my diet so that I don't hate life. (laughs) Uh, If you want to get real crazy with it, you go get, you get the genetic test that tells you what your body actually wants and doesn't want. And then you can take that to a nutritionist and they will look that over and plan you out meal plans so that you can now not have to worry as much about the planning. You just have to check off the boxes at the grocery store and keep it in your fridge. (laughs) You know, like it's all like we're going back to where I started. It's all tied together. And this is why, using food analogies to help people with emotions is really appropriate, right? Because the foods we eat play into our emotions. And, you know, when I look around and I see all these people who are depressed, it's it's about really what they consume emotionally, this stupid TV, but it's also about what they consume physically. The The foods that we eat, there are people who are nutritionally starved, even though they eat three meals a day. And it's because the body doesn't get what it needs to operate even minimally. I mean, I, even, I don't think- even when you're, but you, you're in that state of like, uh, so I'm going to reward sensor myself. And so that reward sensor is that McDonald's, it's that box of donuts. It's that I'm bowl of ice cream. It's the, the reward is not good for you. 
<laughs> and the, no. And be, you're having a bad day. I want to feel better. It's just, you know, Chick fil A is going to make me feel better. But in the long right? run, and it's so, actually not. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this story if you have time. It, it's, sure, it's a video I watched on, I don't know what, what social media cha uh, channel it was, but this man was taking a video of his little daughter crying. She, I don't know, she was like four, five or six years old and, and she's just crying. And he's like, why are you crying? And she's just like, I don't know. I don't know. And, and just crying and crying. And finally she goes, I think I'm going to go get something to eat and watch my favorite TV show. So she finally, because he, he actually identified her as being sad. He goes, why are you sad? So I just need to caveat that. She, literally, he's like, why are you sad? She goes, I don't know why I'm sad. And then she went and she watched TV and she was eating and he came back and she's like, oh, I feel much better now. So there was a couple things here that went on. One was that she couldn't distinguish the feelings of hunger interoceptive from the feelings of sadness interoceptive. The father didn't ask her to think about what it was. Like, are you feeling sad? Or is it something else to, to give her that moment to kind mm. of delve into those feelings to see if she could. Ooh. But then she went and ate and she probably ate thinking that it was what was making her feel better. Watching TV and eating food helped her to not feel sad rather than to feel explore you know, less hungry to to actually fix her probably what was a blood sugar problem which was making her sad so that was teaching this little girl like when you're sad you eat i mean that's what it looked mm. like in the video and that is why you see situations like what you're talking about where i want to feel better so i'm going to go eat because we have this association not that eating is associated to providing us the fuel we need but it, it's to make us feel better. It's our emotional support food. <laughs> feel better in the in in a different way. We always feel better when we mm. eat. It's it's just why are we eating to so that was Let my, thy food my food be thy story. medicine. Yeah, that's no, solid food, food story. Food be thy fuel and not an emotional support <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, if anyone's listening yeah. and you have little kids, this is important. Teach them the difference between feeling hungry and feeling sad. You can be crying because you're hungry because you just, your, your, your blood sugar so low, so you're, you're out of whack. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so teaching your children to distinguish the, the, the difference in those feelings, it's, that's, that's going to make for a powerful parent. And it's just taking a second to dive one level past that initial exterior motivation, right? Like you're sad, what but are you, why are you be. sad? What What are you feeling? Do you is your is your tummy grumbly? Is your right? Is yep. your are you tired? Like did you not sleep well last night? What? Why are you mm -hmm. sad? Yeah, just take that moment Love it. to to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, you enjoy your leftovers. And Thank you. Tell, I tell will. Your husband, I, I said, I said, happy belated uh, uh, doggy daddy day. <laughs> I will do that. Thank you so much. And um, I, whenever I get out out your way, I'm gonna look you up. And if you, if you are ever in this uh, valley, the other valley, I would, I would love you to let be in know. that valley again someday. Someday. It's um, it's a food mecca for sure. My my wife's never seen redwoods, so. <gasps> oh well, that would be lovely. That would be good. Mm -hmm. It's still so one it's of these days. We're going. We're, they haven't cut them all down yet. <laughs> um, they're wow. really protected. So that's good. No. They should stay that way. Yeah, they should stay that way. Yeah, they should stay. That way. Awesome. All right, everybody, go get Kim Corte's book. The link is right down there. Uh, you can also go check out her website and follow her on all of her social medias. Uh, Kim, oh, thank also, you so much. This I, was a fantastic conversation. I just want one more plug. Yeah, uh, Flavors of plug. Emotions. That's my my new podcast, Flavors of Emotions. It plays everywhere, and you can go to flavorsofemotions.com and uh, check it out if you wish. Yes, go listen to our podcast, Flavors of Emotions. 
uh, which I bet you can also find on the website at kimcorte.com. I bet you can. <laughs> I bet you can. And also a link for a book can. if you don't if you don't want to order it from that affiliate link that I put right there, which you totally should. Thank you. For <laughs> yes, me. It. order from the affiliate. Everyone, <laughs> everyone be healthier. Uh, eat healthier, think healthier, and uh, we'll all be emotionally more full. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, cheers. Order up. Hey.